back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the broadcast here, Breaky CBK. Coming at you, we got the Star Ladder I League Star Series Invitational Season Number Two. Our European qualifying action continuing Game Two with EPG currently up one game to nothing over Cyber Anzi. So looking forward to seeing how Game Two now plays out. Obviously, an entertaining Game One is expected. Uh, solid play amongst both teams, but in the end, Elements Pro Gaming the Power of Sven definitely shined through. The he final pick, Sven, a little concerned for him in terms of being kited, but he proved he proved that not to be an issue. Great team support team around, back. and ultimately the victory. So well played by them, and looking forward to seeing how they continue things on into game number two right here. So uh, Team Anzi, though, their draft, they're going to get the Magnus into a Lena pick so far. So obviously a strong Five start for three. them. Monkey King and Warlock, the responses from Elements Pro Gaming. Now Warlock, he was on the other side last game, but overall going to be a great support option, of course, especially if I have some team fight presence. Reserve and time. him with the Monkey King already definitely bringing that. Uh, I wonder if it's almost a takeaway as well from Team Anzi. You know, you have the Magnus, great setup for the Chaotic Offering with the RP. Could be a potential too. And, and just in general, like I said, it just a, actually a very good support option. So not surprised to see him over here for EPG, but the fourth ban from Cyber Anzi, they're thinking about it for a while. They're going to eventually go with the Sand King, actually. Radiant yeah, the TA back. before that. The initial bans were Nyx into a Treant Projector. So we've seen a lot of Treant today between the first series and now this one. The first series we saw him in two games. He was 2-0. This series, though, obviously he uh, came out on the losing end of this first game, right? Yeah, he was on Team Anzi, I'm pretty sure. No, he was on the other side. What am I saying? No, that's right. He was on the other side. He was on EPG with all the armor stacking that they were doing. So never mind. He is actually still undefeated today. Um, but he's going to be banned out here by Team Anzi, so remaining. not going to see him. Uh, Invoker Omni and now Juggernaut Lifestealer bans from EPG coming out. So we'll see for, for Team Anzi again. Apparently, if they stick to what they did Reserve in the first game, uh, Yoku is going to be their, their carry here. Havost instead playing the offlane role, at least he did last game with that axe. They have the Magnus pick, so Magnus, we've been seeing him in the offlane. We like a little bit more lately, and seen Lena in the middle lane. Now, Lena, she had those tweaks to her talent tree, so she had that hot spot there in 7.04 especially, but 7.05 came, and she has started to die down a little bit since then. Um, however, we still seen her kind of trickle in here and there, and when we do, then the question is, you know, what kind of build do we see from her? Do we see that early on Bloodstone? Do we instead get the Yul Scepter? Uh, pick up initially as a reaction to not having that respawn talent right from the beginning. So it'll be curious to see what uh, this Lena does, whoever ends up playing an NT, their mid player, it seems like. Assuming that it's going to be the mid roll right here. So um, on the other side, though, EPG, they've already got their support options now taken care of. Need to figure out uh, who their <laughs> cores essentially are going to be. And Abaddon's going to be one of them. Uh, more, more than likely a safe lane, a bad in here. Abaddon. I find myself changing between those two names quite a bit. It's just kind of like the flow of the cast, whichever one <laughs> I feel like saying, I guess. But uh, Abaddon, we'll go with Abaddon for now. Um, he uh, is that third pick here for Elements Pro Gaming, and I'm always kind of curious what the Euphotic Shield maybe is going to be useful Five against in such a lineup, uh, I guess, you know, for removing, getting out of said uh, stun, specifically the LSA, time. and also mitigating damage done with that big Laguna Blade burst at just in general, though, I don't know if you necessarily pick up Abaddon for that uh, for that supporting presence necessarily. It just happens to be a nice kind of benefit, but that the Curse of Avernus on top of the, the ultimate of the Borrowed Time, obviously a strong presence from him himself, and we'll generally see a lot of these Abaddons built into a Radiance, actually, as far as the game picks up. So we'll see if this time around for EPG, that's going to be the case, but they got kind of that reset tool now on their side. The fourth pick for Team Anzi or Cyber Anzi even. Perhaps need another support to go along with their one position, Radiant and they're going to go Ricky pick. with a fourth pick. Interesting seeing the Ricky coming out, one we do not get to see all too often. I can't recall the last Ricky game I've actually casted, to be honest, uh, here in Dota 2 as of recent history. So this is going to be fun to see coming out for Cyber Anzi and uh, what remain. potential he's going to bring. Again, they don't have that Dark Seer synergy, the idea of putting the Ion Shell on him and running remain. around, and I don't think that would be a final pick here. You said it, it seems like that they have their time. cores or their offlane especially taken care of with the Magnus already. Although, you know, Magnus with the Tarks here, that would be kind of interesting with a vacuum on top of an RP, even a double pull effect. But yeah, probably not going to be seen 
Uh, again, expecting more of that one position for sure. Something that would be good again, perhaps, is that Chirocopter. Uh, we saw the run of the first game. I'm kind of wondering if maybe even a ban from EPG could happen here on such a potential pick. But it seems like the synergy definitely is lining up pretty well as far as that call down working. And doing plenty of damage. On the other side for EPG, though, again, it's going back to the Rubik pick, actually, for Cyber Anji, that is. Uh, they got the spell steal for that chaotic offering. You always got to be careful about that if you're the Warlock in this case. So already a great spell to take advantage of. And EPG trying to figure which one in two positions they're going to want here. Who do they want matched up against the Lena? Invoker and TA band as far as what could have been options. Let's see what, uh, I mean, OD is still on the board. Ember Spirit, of course, still on the board, and they will go with Ember Spirit as that mid option again. So it worked out pretty well for them last game. Uh, Ping Vincek ended up playing it and did a hell of a job. So this time around, it's going to be matched up against Lena here. And that Flame Guardian figure is going to be good to have in such a matchup. Ten but uh, it also kind of depends eight. what's going to happen with the roaming here. Ricky Radiant could very likely back. sit in the middle lane and cause issue for Ember Spirit. And also then what Monkey King is going to do in response. So going to be a very interesting early laning phase. LC will be the final ban from Cyber Anzi here. And now the final ban for EPG. Ten seconds remaining. Again, the Gyrocopter is kind of working off of that first game even. Could have potentially still been a good pick. They're going to ban Slark themselves. Now, I know Swift Ending has a lot of history playing Slark, actually. But they're going to take it away as an option. Obviously preventing themselves from getting it, but clearly they did not want it, as they did have the first of the final picks here. Ten seconds but now which direction remaining. do they go in? I mean, Sven, would he once again Five be a solid pick here? Uh, I guess I don't see why not. <laughs> it kind of worked for them last game. Whoa. Team pick. Wait a second. What is going on here? So a clockwork final pick happening uh, is that going to be a I mean something's going to be a little Ten funky here what am I missing because you got monkey king warlocks you expect it to be the supports either this is going to be a Five farming monkey remain. king or this is going to be Reserve a time. middle abaddon with a one position ember spirit I mean what is what is happening I guess it could be a safe lane abaddon with a mid ember spirit still but something's going to be funky here. This is really curious to see what they're going to be doing. Anti-Mage will be the final pick on the other side. Meanwhile, coming out. So we saw that ban happen, I guess, to, um, a Havos-specific hero. But as we, as we mentioned, I mean, he's not necessarily playing the carry for this team. So I guess there's not really that threat unless they, they want to do it still. Um, unless, I mean, they could throw him on the Anti-Mage and then have uh, whoever was playing the, the carry, uh, Yoku, play uh, instead more of the offlane on Magnus. I don't know how comfortable he is on that, but this is going to be interesting here. A, f a fun finish to the draft. And uh, see who's going to do what, because uh, I'm still looking back at EPG's lineup, though, and kind of scratching my head a little bit as far as what we're ultimately going to be seeing here. Uh, not too often we get to see a mid or a safe lane Abaddon, but I, I mean, I guess that could be potential. It's either that, like I said, or more the Monkey King farm. It, it, but is it going to be then a one Five Monkey King? <laughs> is that a possibility? Oh boy, this is uh, this is interesting. I guess I'll just let the game happen here, and kind of react to what we end up seeing. I'm sure Twitch Chat has plenty of opinions on what we're going to be seeing, and they're very certain on it. But we should be loading into the game shortly here. And again, this being game number two, guys, of this best set of three. So here we are, one nothing lead for EPG, trying to close it out here. The winner will move on to play Vega Squadron in the following round. Not an easy matchup by any means. But, uh, of course, uh, four teams got buys in the first round, that being Empire, Vega Squadron, Cloud9, and Na'Vi. And, you know, I'm actually looking at a lot of these teams here in this European qualifiers. It actually seems very CIS heavy now that I'm really looking at it. <laughs> uh, I'm kind of surprised almost that we don't have – because really the only quote-unquote European teams are, I guess, Penta Sports, Pro Dota Gaming, and Prepare that's really it. I, I guess EPG technically too. That we have here. And then Cloud9. So, yeah, four of the teams, I guess. So, four of the 12 teams, from what I can tell. Anyways, we're into the game now. All right, who's on what? LeBron Dota is on the Monkey King, so he's playing more of that support. So, Abaddon, going to be a swift ending. So, we're going to be seeing a one-position Abaddon here. 
Interesting. Would they go the clockwork? Why do they want the clockwork so badly? I mean, hell, against the Anti-Mage, he's not necessarily going to be that great either because, you know, he doesn't have the greatest lockdown for him. He can easily blink away. Obviously, that was after the clockwork came, but I guess they liked the idea of the laning, perhaps, from clockwork. Weren't as much of a fan of the Abaddon in that, uh, the off lane there. I don't know. It really just seems funky, though. I'm, I'm trying to make logic of why the clockwork left. here. Outside of the, it just gives him a nice tool now to, to try to catch said heroes and go for ganks. But, I mean, you got... Ricky, you can blink strike out of the cogs. You got to blink himself from Anti Mage. You have a skewer from Magnus. He can get out. You have the lift from Rubik to lift out the clockwork and help save teammates. It just didn't seem like that this was a game. It's like, oh man, we really need the clockwork. I mean, maybe I'm going to be uh, completely proven wrong for sure. I don't know. I'll gladly be proven wrong, but. Again, not the direction expected to go. But how about this? We're going to say a safe lane Abaddon. Again, not something you get to see often, really. Uh, the one position and what kind of build are we going to see from it is what I'm really curious about. It. I know this hero definitely has potential to go things like the Basher even. Such items such as, you know, Vlad, you know, Basher, a, 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 an AC can really hit hard and fast if you want to build them that way. We talked about the Radiance earlier too, and I guess that could definitely be potential as well. Make a part, uh, more of a priority on that. But here we go, the laning phase, and... As expected, the Lena versus the Amber Spirit, but both do have that support nearby. Ricky. Do they have a sentry? They do. Monkey King does have a sentry. Still waiting to place it. Probably waiting to confirm that uh, that Ricky is actually here. Before he wants to put that down, Ricky going to show himself and <laughs> come up for some last hit. So now they know he's here. And now Monkey King can perhaps place that sentry if the opportunity calls for it. The Dire is aware that he has a sentry ward on him as well. That was and I'm going to keep choice. that in mind. So it should be a fun middle lane back and forth. So far, 5 and 1 Ember Spirit, 4 and 0 Lena. Monkey King, did he get his passive first? He did. He did get Jingu Mastery first. So we are seeing that presence here as well, causing issue. Anti Mage. Meanwhile, all the mana's gone for Clockwork thanks to the Anti Mage. Little mana break. Nay. And keeping that pressure up. It is Yoku on the mage, by the way. So, Avost is playing Magnus in that off lane. No, it is not Chu from Han. I know several people have said that. No, this is not the same Chu. This is definitely a much different Chu here. Has no resemblance. So Ricky, he's now roaming towards the bottom lane, though. Fastest blade in the land. Death's Abaddon, again, bounty. gonna definitely keep a close eye on him to see what he's gonna be doing as far as that build goes. But Ricky continuing to scout throughout. He actually picked up a haste room. Nice tool to be able to get information with. It seems like Lena's actually managing very good farm here in the middle lane. Monkey King hasn't been able to make use of that. Jingu Mastery as far as zoning her out, preventing effective farm. So well played by Lena there. The top lane, though, it's not a surprise to see Anti-Mage having the fantastic time. Of course, the Battle Fury, I'm sure, going to be in the works right here. Really one of the few heroes remaining that we still see a Battle Fury as just the go-to build on. Is there even another hero? I'm trying to think now. <laughs> Is there another one where it's like he's going Battle Fury no matter what? I think Antimage is the only one that's off the top of my head. Obviously, that with the Empower going to be nice. A lot of uh, a lot of cleave damage coming out from the Antimage here. Middle lane. Nope, Ricky. I mean, okay, they actually counted their Sentry, but then the recounter of the Sentry. They're playing the Sentry Ward game. Here in the middle lane. Bottom lane, Magnus, Avost, he's going in. He's going to go TP out, though. Realize that kind of just getting information, Indian I guess, and harassing. There is a ward down here as well, but he ports back to the shrine area where he'll be fine. NT on Lena. Obviously has Monkey King there as well now. No Ricky nearby this time. But still no first blood as we're now approaching four minutes into this game here. 
wrap around. Coming out from Monkey King, trying to <laughs> be a little deceptive here. That's not going to work too well. D we'll just put down the Observer Award, get some information for the team. It's Abaddon, meanwhile, though. Phase Boots queued up. He almost has those finished. Magnus, he's 11 and 0. He's level 4, not doing too bad here. As that poor man shield and boots himself, of course. But that Empower buff going to prove to be very crucial for the Anti Mage to kind of go in that strategy. Like to have that right click and a juggernaut. It's kind of the usual combination that we've been seeing a lot lately. But Anti Mage Boom, most certainly the goes. potential to make benefit of that as well, too. Excellent. Dyer's top tower is under attack. A very slow start, though, to what is game number two now, though. Almost approaching the five-minute mark again. Still no first blood action happening. Yeah, Anti-Mage continues to lead the way. Power treads have been queued up here. They're roaming towards the top lane, looking to make a play on a clockwork. Smoke not going to be coming out, actually. He does have the smoke screen, but he chooses best not to use it as a battery assault in response from Mitch. Just had enough mana for it and will be enough to get away, actually. So I don't know if they were waiting for a better opportunity for that smoke screen or not, but he chose to hold on to it. And at least Clockwork will have to go all the way back to base and regen. Middle lane. Pounce on the Primal Spring onto NT, but he goes right back into the trees. But now he's going to be spotted by Ricky. And there is that TP coming in. Nope, it got canceled, actually, wherever that was. So never mind. <laughs> hey, it's a regen rune. Yeah, they're having fun with this. He'll pick up the illusion rune. That's actually well played, though, by LeBron Dota. Going for that six-minute rune right there. Mine. And is that is that the illusion lag? I assume if everyone was feeling that, we'd probably pause the game. But okay, it's going to wear off right there. All that happened every once in a while. Good old illusion runes. All right, but Abaddon, he's going to be going the flats here first. Not surprised to see that, of course, as expected. But okay, where does he go for the Vlads? I know the Vlads Radiance idea. I was talking about earlier is middle lane. Whew, a lot of pressure onto the Lena here, but Amber Spirit not going to commit too crazy. Just going to use some bottle charges. Does have his infused raindrop as well. Laguna Blade at least has it leveled up, but Lena, of course, not much mana to work with currently. Now I'm going to wait to get that bottle back. Magnus, though? Where is Magnus? He was jungling a little bit right there. Ricky trying to leech experience now at the bottom lane. Magnus did pick up that Iron Talon, though, and he's finding himself in his own dire side jungle now, even. Trying to get level 6. Get those Arcane Boots. Be useful throughout. Leveling up that Shockwave, of course. Ricky just finding an opportunity now to just leech and get some free experience right here. They don't have a Sentry or Dust at the bottom lane, so this... Should be a pretty safe feeling for Chu here. Abaddon, though, putting a lot of pressure on this bottom tower. In fact, tanking the tower quite a bit. Or gets it off of him. But now Rubik coming in, and Chu, he's going to actually get the borrowed time popped right there. So well played. And now he's going to get healed on up, though, by the Shadow Word. Or he'll be fine and just go back to farming. But not going to be a tower kill as a result. <laughs> a monkey. It's going to turn into trees on top of trees. Invisibility? Invis picked up by Ricky, actually. Steals it from the Monkey King. This could be potential first blood. Laguna Blade is ready to go, but he cannot get close enough, can Lena. And obviously, they don't want to get too deep into the jungle there, so they'll decide it's best to fall back. And right now, Abaddon, he actually has the Hand of Midas queued up, so going to follow up. Money to burn. What, uh, what was the Vlads, I believe. Into a hand of Midas here. Oh, no, he switched it up. Okay, he didn't even get the. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Why am I not seeing it now? So he's, he's changed his mind. I guess a uh, potential case of just having so much free farm feels like the hand of Midas is going to be better use here at this point. Has that pattern purchase. Middle lane. 
Amber Spirit, Smoke Screen comes out. The LSA will not land, though. And now Monkey is here, Blink Strike away. And the Dragon Slave also misses. Now and T's in a bad spot. He has to be able to get the first blood first. But Amber Spirit in return, and the battery is to tick down Lina. Make it a one for one. So it took nine minutes, but we finally have a first blood. Lina gets it at least. But obviously, the quick response there coming out from EPG. Well played by Ping Vensek. Also avoiding both the LSA and even the Dragon Slave. Oh, meanwhile, Monkey King gets stunned, actually. Good calling blade right there from Yoku. But he's going to take a lot of tower damage as well, so you have to blink away. And again, has that Battle Fury queued up. So Power Treads finished, Ring of Health on him. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Middle and Ember Spirit, Boots of Travel. That being queued up, very similar, pretty much the same thing as last game, in fact. Ricky hunting around. Almost level five. Ember Spirit's going in, actually. Playing guard level four is up, so a lot of damage that you have to get through. 500 there. Lena's not going to mess with that. That should help. Meanwhile, double damage read also bottled up by him. So Hannah Midas, and he's going to use that to go right into the Radiance here. So Swift Ending going the very greedy build on the Abaddon, but he proves to get that in a timely manner. That's going to be very scary to deal with Death's bounty. on the other side, of course. Warlock, he might be in some trouble, smokescreen, but nope, just really can't run him down. Obviously, Ricky doesn't really have the greatest chase, doesn't have his tricks of the trade yet. But he's going to keep the pressure up on a Warlock, in fact, Maybe even run him down. Oh, Courier Snipe. No, he blink striked in past the Courier. Oh, that's unfortunate timing right there for the uh, for the Ricky. And even goes back and attempts him a little bit, but he's not going to risk chasing. So top lane, Mitch, again, out of mana. Does have a mana void, but I guess it wouldn't be enough for the kill right now. Now with the Radiant's battery assault active, got to be attack. careful with it. Doesn't want to waste it necessarily. Magnus has those arcane boots finished. Blink has been queued up. So once he, once he gets that blink, definitely would expect more and more action to start taking place. But, you know, to be fair on the side of uh, Cyber Anzi, you expect much more of the passive play. At least initially, you know, buy time for the anti-mage. Play the 4-1 four, four, strat, really. Radiance you know, Lena, again, I'm curious what she's going to go for first. In fact, we have some answers. Four staff is going to be first. So that's so what we talked about, the idea of no longer having that level 10 respawn time talent to go in synergy with the Bloodstone early on. So instead, going to be going the forest app. Still expect a Bloodstone, at least from my experience, that's what we've still been seeing. But uh, just getting it a little bit later instead. Ember Spirit and a couple others roaming through the woods. Meanwhile, Clockwork, he has the hook shot, but he can't really get the angle. Magnus skewers away and making them play very Ooh, defensively as a team. Lena. I'll switch over to the net worth chart right here. Lena, yeah, only 4,000 net worth currently. Again, has had a little bit of a struggle here early on. Chu spotting them out as they're running through. If you're this Radiant side, you probably suspect maybe something like that could be happening. Well, they try to make a play on Clockwork. It looks like they want to. Chu going in. Radiant's puts a smoke screen, but they can't catch up to him. In fact, the XP's better, so he's going back in. They do have Chaotic Offering. There's the catch on a Rubik. King comes a Chaotic Offering as well. Clockwork, he's pushed out. They get the call to Rubik, though. The, L or the Laguna Blade so it was mitigated quite a bit. They eventually get the kill, but at what cost now for Lina? He's in trouble. Abaddon running in the face right here. The Phonic Shield's put up. Down goes Lina. And now the Chaotic Offering going to help try to get the kill to Ricky here as he is dusted, I believe. Yeah, the Primal Spring in. Shoot, can he maybe blink strike to somebody? The smoke screen put down. Not going to matter. Double kill for Gogi there. And a three for one exchange in favor of the Radiant side. So, yeah, that turnaround, having the Chaotic Offering gave them the go-ahead to make a play in that fight. And the numbers also just that much better for them, too. I guess uh, Anti-Mage, obviously, he's just farming away. He does have that Battle Fury now finished. But, again, he's not going to be one that's involved in fights earlier in the game. So the Radiant side most certainly needing to take advantage of that. But that's where you can also look at this Yabadon. Very greedy build of the Hannah Midas into the Radiance. As a, uh, you know, is that the best choice when you're kind of racing almost against an Anti-Mage? Not pretty confident that 
That's obviously not going to be an issue. Ember Spirit in his early solid farm is helping too. Bots picked up. Another 900 gold saved up. They're going to find switch ending and they get the pop right away in the borrowed time. Done a pretty good, pretty good job of that. In fact, throw him in the air. This could be a kill. Mana Void ready. Yeah, they secure it. And now Swift ending dying to anti mage of all heroes, actually. Not good news for EPG. Well played right there by No Fear, especially to zap him with the Fade Bolt to initially proc the borrowed time. And the lift to delay him. So, very good execution. Double damage on Ember Spirit, but don't think that's going to be enough to drop this anti mage by any means. Going to do a bit of damage. Dyer's top tower is under attack. However, the Aphotic Shield actually from Rubik, which he stole, <sighs> continues to be used. And he's still down here, actually. No response coming in just yet. Magnus, meanwhile, farming out the middle lane. Almost has that Blink Dagger. 1960 gold saved up. Monkey King, his own hand of Midas in the works. Ember Spirit figures not worth defending by himself at least and they're actually just going to give up this tier one tower, tower at the bottom lane abaddon finds himself at the top lane falling. instead pushing it out up here warlock and clockwork coming on up clockwork actually has his own hand of midas finished here. warlock got a offering up in three seconds radiance bottom tower is under attack Dyer's middle tower is under Anti -mage. attack. Anti-mage. Manta style going to be next in line for him. Finish that Yasha first, of course, which actually I think is being delivered to him currently. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Yeah, there we go. It is on the courier. There we go. So has the Yasha now, but the top tower, tower goes down in response for EPG. Good push up here. Swift ending 2,300 gold mine. saved up. So the Sacred Relic needs that 3,800 gold, of course, for that. So still going to be a bit before Swift Radiant's ending has it going to go. Meanwhile, attack. Monkey King flying around the Rubik, but going to make his way out before any kind of catch happens. Abaddon's still pushing the top lane, but X or Havos here, he does have the Blink Dagger, going to use it right away on the Ember Spirit, but no follow-up in time. Very greedy target to choose it on, hoping he didn't have Remnants down, perhaps, but top tower he gets caught, attack. not killed, though. Dyer's RP used, and now that's EPG having a little bit of an opening here. They, they not only get the information that, of course, Blink was uh, picked up, but by the way, Lino was picked. What did I miss that? That must have been happening. Mitch actually gets the credit for the kill right there, but it looks like that happens as that bottom bot was kind of taking place. Or I just completely whipped that. I apologize there. <laughs> well, that's a solid kill, obviously, for EPG. To top it all off, and now with RP being down, they're going to feel comfortable pushing this middle lane, it looks like. Got Abaddon, of course, leading the way. Borrowed time, ready to go. Again, his, his inventory is not the strongest just yet. He only has a hand of minus of phase boots, really. But he has 3,000 gold he's sitting on, trying to get that sacred relic. Incoming. So he's not necessarily the most threatening at this point. Not everyone's Radiant's here, though. In fact, Ember Spirit is currently attack. at the bottom side of the map, pushing out the lane down there and farming the jungle. So this mid-tower siege not going to be as quick as they perhaps hoped for. Aphotic Shield once again stolen. By Rubik there, Swift Ending going in, keeping the pressure up. This is going to be an interesting decision, though. Will they commit to this tower push, or will they finally fall back? It looks like they're going to play it somewhat safe and not go all out. But yeah, Abaddon needs to continue to farm then. Really needs that Radiance here. Investing so much early time and resources into it. Radiance middle tower. Anti Mage, meanwhile, the Yasha finished. Purchase the pattern right there, but he's going to have his Manta style. And he's feeling pretty comfortable about possibly, you know, taking a fight if need be. As he'll blink away before any kind of catch happens there. But speaking of catch, I guess they do have the clockwork as well as the, the Warlock for that matter with the Chaotic Offering. But again, not the overall strongest lock down here on the uh, Radiant side. Eh, a little Searing Chains too. Yeah, there are several abilities now that I think about it. Ricky continuing to hunt around. I don't think they have would have any kind of gem, but man, they have three hand of Midas's. Yeah, Clockwork, Monkey King, and Abaddon all with their hand of Midas. Warlock is also getting his. So it's going to be four hand of Midas here on the side of EPG. Everyone but Ember Spirit, which wouldn't expect that. Smoke screen down here, Warlock. Yeah, it's a poor kind of nearby. Lacuna play committed to this, and they get that kill. Tricks of the trade activated. 
Oh, for it. Monkey King cannot get there in time to make a play, but you know, it's one case is it's just a warlock. In fact, they do stop his hand of minus timing though. He actually almost had it right there, so at least they slow him down, get a kill for the uh, for the Lena. Who still doesn't have that four staff finished, man. A bounty which my matriarch will prize. It's been a pretty struggle of a game for this Lena right here, but they do find somebody else, that being Chew on Ricky. Want to be seen like this. And by them, I mean clockwork. It's that solo kill, really. Good job hunting him out. And again, this final pick, Clockwork, which definitely made for some interesting lanes, most noticeably the, the one position, one position Abaddon is uh, definitely working out. Clockwork is 3-1-3 and three this game. has been very controlling as you would like. That's what they definitely need to be very active earlier on in this game. Now, only six hero kills as we're approaching 20 minutes, so I guess from that perspective, not necessarily the most active. But... Swift ending is going to purchase a sacred relic here. And so 13.50 needed now for the pattern to finish. And he will have that radiance. Never refuse gold given. Okay, Forest Staff has now been finished on Lena. And he does have the Bloodstone queued up next. So he just got the attack range talent. Let's see what he gets at level 15. There's the Warlock finishing his own Hand of Midas. And now we have the five Hand of Midas on the radiant side. Ember Spirit, how about that? He's going to Battle Fury. All right. So if anything, this also is a case of, you know what, we want a way to contest with the Antimage later game, and we're going to go see more of the old school build here from the Ember Spirit. As he's following up with the Battle Fury, they want to catch Antimage, but it's a lot easier said than done. In fact, he's level 17 as well. I guess that's what he does. Jeez, is still impressive. Manta-style finish, roaming around to the bottom lane. Top lane, even. Mitch he has Ember Spirit now coming back in. Ricky's kind of scouting out what's going on. They see the point from Monkey King. They want to make a play, though. LeBron Dota trying to get away. Four staff. Found the strike. And it's not going to be enough, though. Mana point committed by Yoku to secure the kill. So all five heroes are being here, though, to make that kill happen. Go for the Tier 2. Meanwhile, Abaddon picks out the middle tower. So they get a little bit of a response from it. But the top Tier 2 does fall. Antimage with that level 4 in power now on top of the battle fury. So again, he is actually really scary at this point. Radiance courier has been killed. As a Radiant Courier gets killed, actually. Was there anything on it? It looks like, yeah, the pattern for the Radiance. Oh, no. That's big, actually. That means that that Radiance is now going to be delayed by another three Radiance minutes. Oh, that hurts. Well played by Ricky right there. Middle at least they'll deny the middle, middle tower in response, but not going to have that Radiance on. Abaddon, so three more minutes, uh, two and a half now, but still that uh, they're not going to be as threatening here. Yoku, bottom lane. Going to get support from Lena nearby. He's just keeping them active, though, keeping them guessing. That's what Antimage does. Has the Vanguard now purchased, so the Abyssal Blade. Going to be his next item choice coming out here. Monkey King, he's spotting him. But they would definitely need, I mean, even if they have everyone here, it's still so tough, it feels like, to kill them. In fact, anyway, it's just going to run right at the Abaddon. Not really too worried. He's going back in. Balance strike, though. He is pretty far committed now. Root comes out. Man, style to take it off, though. And they get the borrow time popped right away. And so now that's going to be on cooldown. They do minimal damage to follow. Clockwork. He's trying to run. Lacuna Blade to snipe out Warlock. Eventually get him killed. Ricky was picked off elsewhere. They also one for one so far. Now the Wukong's command coming in, and Yoku will just walk away. Well, if anything, it keeps them from really committing into the Tier 2 middle, I guess. But now Ember Spirit has to be a little careful. That Battle Fury has been finished, and he is building the Chrysalis next. So, again, this is a very well, much more of the old school traditional build. Uh, Minavoid? Yeah, he's going to stop his TP, but the Remnant will be used. So, not the longest cooldown. Only 60 more seconds, even. Worth uh, kind of disrupting, if, if anything, I think you could argue. And now the bottom secondary tower. That's going to be an easy take for Cyberonzi here. Skullbasher just picked up on Antimage, meanwhile. So, again, that Abyssal Blade almost online here. 16,000 net worth. Just absurd. See him so far up there. Level 19 on top of that. With the health into the attack speed for those curious of the talent tree. Not a hero we see often. Tendable stats are 15% evasion next level. We'll see what he gets there. You can see either or. 
Abaddon still 20 more Radiance seconds before that Radiance. Oh, jeez. Again, this just continues to hurt. <laughs> I feel for them, man. That courier snipe, though, was so big. This has really just allowed for so much of an opening here. Again, this Abaddon is not nearly as threatening without that. They're going to be forced to use a fortification here on this Tier 2 middle tower. Possibly deny it. See if they choose to or not. Yeah, they're going to deny it. Radiance Not worth Middle keeping out for the bounty. So anti mage though, we'll just blink away. Continue with his farm, work towards that Abyssal Blade. Blink Dagger just picked up by Rubik. He currently has a Flame Guard still in, but this is going to allow him to position even better and ideally get that Chaotic Offering if possible. Death's Smoke on in from the Radiant side, thinking that maybe Roshan's going on, but that's not the case. We're going to check, check up in the Shrine area. No Shrine to use. Never mind, they collapse more towards the middle lane. Decided it's best not to run uphill. Probably a smart decision there. <laughs> they need to hunt around, but if they're patient enough, they may find a chance. Yeah, they're going to spot the anti mage middle lane. Excellent. Well, they're trying to make a play right here. Doesn't seem like they're going to be going for too much. Abaddon does have the Radiance now, finally. And the Blade Mail almost finished as well. But not going to get the catch that they hoped for with that smoke, so instead we'll fall back and continues to be, once again, a pretty passive game here. 25 and a half minutes, 7 to 6 hero kills. Got to think that favors the anti-mage team, though, and especially with his great farm. Level 20 now has been hit, has the tendril stats, and the Abyssal Blade to go with that now. Top lane, Lena, she's hiding, but she's going to get out of there before she gets caught. Does have the 12 charges now of the Bloodstone. Teammates thinking he found a chance right here. Abyssal Blade comes out of the clockwork. That's four staff finds some distance at least with a smoke screen. And then the mana void to get the kill eventually on a clockwork. So just like that, a target dead. Really just couldn't even react to it. And they're spread out too far. Gonna transition nicely into a Roshan kill, it looks like. I don't think EPG is gonna be stopping this one. Blade Mill finish on Abaddon, but yeah, it just feels like, again, this this idea that they're running him in the one position, this Abaddon's having very little to no impact. It, it just, I, I, I gotta call it what it is, right? Like, he's 0 1 and 1. You just imagine if he was another carry, like, imagine if he was more of a Slark carry. Like, they ban Slark themselves. How much, uh, I, I know that it's, you can't necessarily just look at that, but hold that thought, though, because Anti Mage goes in right here, he gets rooted, but the man still off. Blade Mill has to be careful with that. Go out before he does too much damage to himself. But yeah, it just seems like it was an odd choice in the first place, and it isn't proven to work out the greatest as the game moves on right here. Lena is going to get caught, though. Half-Life, nice job with the defense. And Rubik's been using the Aphotic Shield, I feel like, more useful than Abaddon has himself. <laughs> Didn't that come out several times? That's clearly the, uh, the key ability that Rubik's like it. And it is definitely coming into play here. So Cyber Anzi knocking on the door, but not going to be able to do enough to get the Tier 3 tower. Just enough counter siege on the part of EPG that will hold them off. But at the same time, too, they do have the Ember Spirit here, who is building much more of that traditional, not traditional even, but the old school traditional Battle Fury and the Chrysalis here. Has the, uh, the Daedalus now coming along. None so, again, it's been a while since we've seen this style of build uh, for me personally, and how can it contest with the likes of an anti-mage doing so well? That's looks like that's what EPG is going to be relying on, much more of that split push presence, and he might be able to kill NT right here. No, the Aphotic Shield again saves the day. I think that might have just been enough of a save right there. Wow. This Rubik, man. MVP. But then, yeah, that on top of, yeah, the Empower from Magnus constantly being thrown onto the Anti-Mage has definitely got to be that, that true acceleration here. He has a Butterfly queued up in the works, meanwhile. Magnus just get a four Staff and his own Hand of Midas himself. You see the net worth dipping a little bit more and more in favor 
of Cyber Anzi, now up to about a 6,000 net worth, 6,000 experience lead. Ember Spirit comes back up here. Going to find a Rubik, actually, but a quick remnant use. Didn't want to take the risk. Monkey King continues to push out bottom lane. He's actually trying to finish an Echo Saber here. So not going to be going the Basher route, which is like more the typical. LeBron Dota. That's the Echo Saber, at least initially. Abaddon pops up all time. Gets an attack out of it, so at least healed up a little bit too. But now that will be on cooldown here for a good 40 seconds. Reclaim on the Aegis in just under two minutes by Yoku. That's plenty of time to do damage here. Tier 3 is going to be taken out. Will he even try to defend? Got counter push bottom lane from Monkey King, I guess, happening. But oh, he finishes the Echo Saber as he comes back into the base. So they clearly want to defend right here. The RPU solo on Abaddon. They know he doesn't have the ultimate, and they will get the kill to result. He does have a buyback, though. Chaotic Offering comes out. And now Yoku has to run away. The Freight of Bonds definitely doing plenty of damage. Wukong's command, they lock down Ricky as well as Ribbit. They catch Annie Mage. Will they get the kill? No, the blink of the last second is still not done just yet, though. Amber Spirit, more Remnants. All the Searing Chains, barely not enough. The Shadow Word's on him, actually. Maybe a rocket. No, <laughs> it almost connected. The Fatal Bond's still on him, but he's going to pop a Shrine right here as he gets a nice little Haste Druid, and he will manage to barely survive. But what a hold from EPG Dyer's at their base right there. A three-for-one exchange. And right away, Ember Spirit goes to the bottom lane. So as scary as this anti-mage is with the farm, again, the Ember Spirit definitely proving to be just as scary as this game picks up here. Now, at least with the split push, and that, that will be an issue now for this uh, dire side. So the rating, as long as they can grind this out, this is definitely setting up to be a much longer game here. Uh, that's most certainly been the game plan for EPG with the way they drafted. Abaddon now has the Octarine core queued up. So that'll help in a couple of ways. Especially at level 20, gets that 15% cooldown reduction. Yeah, that with the Octarine Core, that must make his ultimate pretty damn short cooldown. Oh, well, you get like an Axe on top of that? That would be really interesting. We're going to go for the Shrine, though, is Cyber Anzi here. And that will be an easy Shrine kill. No defense put up. Luna just gets one more charge on the Bloodstone so far, but at least he's keeping it. Very positive. There's the reclaim on the Aegis. So that's right. Anti-Mage did have the Aegis, to be fair. <laughs> I did overlook that a little bit. So worst case, he dies there and just pops right back up anyways. But ends up not using it. Will by a heart, however. So he changed his mind. He did not go the butterfly. He ends up going the heart. And actually, he's going to find Ember Spirit up here with Ricky. Smoke screen's put down. But no, the remnant use. He couldn't get the Abyssal Blade off in time. So Ember Spirit survives. Yet again, now the data list just around the corner for him. I wonder if we're going to see a Lincoln Sphere on Ember Spirit eventually, too. If anything for that Abyssal Blade, that could be crucial. Monkey King, Mio, what the <laughs> hell is Monkey King doing way up here? <laughs> he got uh, caught, I guess, being very curious as far as pushing out the bottom lane, even Radiant's beyond a Tier 2 tower. tower oh, tells me he's trying to escape, and there's another kill missed. Yeah, oh, Anti Mage gets the kill dear, onto man. Warlock, so. A couple of kills actually coming out for Cyber Anzi. A couple of the supports, that is. Is that enough to really try to push right here? I mean, Warlock does have a buyback with Chaotic Offering up now. So, yeah, he's trying to go back to where that's not going to work. They will definitely buy back, I'm sure, if they really commit to this. That backdoor protection making it very difficult right now, but eventually it's going to wear off. There we go. The Creep Whip comes in. Warlock, 18 more seconds. Would like to be able to hold it off, but he's going to need a buyback here soon if... They keep this up. The Illusions doing plenty of damage. You see, look at that, though. Clear with the slide of fist. The hook shot lands actually in the background on the Anti-Mage. However, Clockwork kind of just trying to stall them, if anything, and that will be accomplished. So they get away. And no buyback needed on Warlock in the end. That should help. Warlock actually working on a scythe. And at this rate, he's actually getting pretty close to being able to finish one. Already has the uh, the Void Stone, just needs a Mystic Staff and Ultimate Orb there, so I guess a little bit of farm needed, but can buy one of those components here soon. And well, the next Shrine taken out, so objectives controlled by Cyber Anzi. 
taking out all the trees as well, just in case. RP is ready for Magnus, who does have a PKB, by the way. Full 10 second duration. Anti Mage. Once again, leading the way here in the middle, or the top lane now. Again, the middle lane. Well, with the tier 3 already dead, and a little bit of damage on the melee racks, but it's being healed up. And Monkey King continues to be an issue as far as split pushing, too. He's constantly elsewhere. He Using that Echo Saber to help him farm. And he's getting close to now finishing a Skull Basher. Just around the corner. Already has the Javelin picked up. So yeah, this is not going to be an easy game to really overwhelm and finish for Cyber Ronzi. That's proven to be the, the issue despite Anti-Mage in this very successful start. Uh, and also, to be fair, supporting cast around him hasn't been having the greatest games either. Lena has been really playing the recovery game for most of it. See the same teammates jumps in aggressively. No Manta even necessary. They're going to force a reaction right here. Abaddon coming back in. There's a fortification. Anti Mage, the lockdown on a clockwork, but he'll be fine. Solar Crest Evasion coming out a little bit. Anti Mage, he's dropping right there. Oh, he blinks out of the last second. They had a chaotic offering, perhaps. That could have been interesting, but. Does manage to get away in another case of saving the melee racks. And it will be healed up. Again, very difficult to push into this. But now the Wukong's command is down. He goes right back in. There's a the balanced strike. Are we going to see the Kadok offering? Yes, we are. The follow up damage in the background. Mitch goes in, catches a couple, including the Magnus, who now skewers away defensively. Blockwork's in a bad spot. Looking to play it onto him, but you know what? That's just fine. He already did his job and it sets down Kozlina as she ends up committing suicide right there at that point. Figure she was dead anyways. Probably the safe bad bunch. Now she's right back up. She did get that talent there of the minus 30 second respawn. So she's going to reset here as Clockwork would have a buyback. But <laughs> they're just doing everything to stop this tier. Uh, this is really the melee racks push even. Again, Andy Mage goes back in, forced to pop the Manta. Trying to use in the background. Using the Warlock Golem also to kind of zone them out. Rubik currently has the cog stolen, not the greatest. Yeah, Laguna Blade will be back up in a couple of seconds. She actually is working on an axe herself. But eventually they're going to give up. They, they, they just say, you know what, we're just wasting too much time. We're not actually breaking through. Let's go ahead and push out the lanes, control some resources here, and then eventually reset. So EPG continues to hold yet again. Find more time for this Ember Spirit especially. As by the way, they will find Monkey King up here. He puts a balance strike out, though. He had support coming in. A boast, though, will finish the job. Yoku actually credit for it, but yeah, they cannot really respond in time. So now Monkey King's dead for 45 seconds. Abaddon's kind of charging in. The gem goes down. That was actually a slide of fist kill coming out from the uh, Ember Spirit again with this bill. That's the potential now. 33 more 100 gold saved up. It's kind of fun to see this more of the old school build of the Ember Spirit. The 10 armor, 6 all stats, 25 damage. And I assume he gets the cooldown reduction. <laughs> uh, I don't know, actually. I guess the Searing Chains, too, could potentially be very powerful as well. Either way, we'll see what uh, Pink Vincent gets, but he's no doubt continuing to be the, the hope here for this Radiant side. Still so far behind in net worth overall of this Anti-Mage, but... Again, it seems like he's, he's still doing plenty. And the Anti-Mage is eventually going to get to a point where he's going to be you know, fully slotted right here, although Butterfly is going to be next in line. And once he has that, then I guess we're looking at Moonshard. And then some backpack play. Invisibility. So 38 minutes in, not the most action-packed game. 12 to 11 hero kills, 23 combined, but understandable with what the lineups are. Meanwhile, Roshan going down. And it should be a free one at that. Age is going to be picked up by Anti-Mage. And Rubik's going in pretty aggressive right here. Another Aphotic Shield stolen. So offending and running away, those Searing Chains root them in place. And they're going to full-on retreat is EPG. Magnus, will he use an RP right here? He's chasing. No, oh, doesn't want to commit to it. Again, it is just an Abaddon. And so he'll stay alive. No borrowed time even popped right there. That's the good news. He actually has enough for his Octarine core, but wouldn't have enough for a buyback, of course. 
But that's that tough spot. If they really commit to a push right here, it'd be nice to have that. But at the same time, you know, the secret shot, kind of tough to make their way over there to finish it. And they're going to smoke up behind the anti-mage here. Trying to prevent them from having information. Bottom lane, Monkey King's pushing it out, meanwhile. Keeping the pressure on, but here we go with the Mayor Rax here in the middle lane. Has to get back. Magnus, a big RP in the background, actually stalls Ember Spirit if anything. The screw's gonna miss, though. Got a coffering will come down with those fade up bonds. Rubik gets up dropping, gets the Gotham the Rax, though. Got what they came for, and now they need to retreat, but Ricky also falls. Lena's two gonna get caught. And that's three now, Dick. And Anti Mage win this battle. Possum Mage down the Abyss of Blade to take out the Monkey King. He says, Fight me, bro. Well, he'll blink away, actually. Ends up being a three for one, but they do get the Melee Racks again. Bottom Tower Tier 2 does fall in favor of EPG. While that happens, Yoku will just continue to farm, meanwhile. That Empower is still up. So it's kind of a mix for both sides. I mean, I still think EPG overall held pretty well, especially for how long it took to get the Rax killed. But eventually does fall. Now Yoku going for a play on Abaddon, going to force the borrowed time here. Radiance he just got the Octarine core, though, and he does get the cooldown reduction, meanwhile. Meanwhile, Magnus is picked off at the bottom lane as the interaction is happening up there. Rubik trying to deal with him, but he goes back in. Oh, actually, choose here as well. Ricky, and he was not expecting that with a smoke. This could be a kill that will be a kill in Ember Spirit. A big one at that. Back to the top lane, though. Anti-Mage going in pretty deep. There's a buyback on Ember Spirit, though. Warlock is already taken out. Yoku gets a tier 3 top. He's going to be rooted in place. Does not have the Mantis style. He does have the Aegis, though, remember. So he really isn't too worried about this. Gets some evasion procs from the Butterfly. And the Searing Chain's not going to connect right there. So Yoku remains alive. And it's just going to walk this one off here. Oh, kind of regen from the heart. Uh, look to go right back in. So the reset capability of that heart is doing wonders. Proving to be the efficient choice for the anti-mage. Again, even without the Magnus being here, still feel pretty confident they can make a play. So if they get another set of racks, that's going to be really devastating. Meanwhile, they jump in the back end on the Monkey King. He can't even get off his ultimate Laguna Blade to secure the job, absolutely. Amber Spirit running back in with a smoke ring causing an issue right there. Monkey King does buy back. Yoku putting in attacks on him, Mitch, but now the Boundless Strike. And Antimage will have to be careful about this. He'll blink away. So not really forcing the objectives here. Although they do get another buyback out of it. So Ember Spirit and Monkey King currently on a timer now with their buyback situation. But again, another case of just doing enough to hold here for your EPG. Abaddon. Has an Assault Curious now in the works. And that level 25 coming along too. Ember Spirit, what did he end up buying? He's going to go for an MKB. Reacting to the Butterfly here. Picked up from the Anti-Mage. Magnus missing the Skewer, but they will catch Warlock still. However, counter on Anti-Mage. There's a Scythe use. And the RP, but now comes a Chaotic Offering. A very aggressive RP. Hell, he got his Chaotic Offering off, though. Gonna turn his job. Warlock is dead in the back, and though, Gem will be dropped. And the Wukong's command being put down by Anti Mage. He's able to blink on out. However, the Golem now here, and try to be a deterrent. Never mind. <laughs> he just melts. Anti Mage doesn't care about that. Now he's going for the melee Rex. Blade Mail pops. He's just gonna focus on the Rex instead. Pushed out, though, doing everything they can to try to push him off, but. He is just too tanky. He doesn't care. The Aphotic Shield coming out from Rubik, even. They go, and Laguna Blade snipes out the Abaddon, actually. He does have a buyback right here, but this could be the beginning of the end. They're really going deep into the base now. Down goes Monkey King. More buybacks even being used on Clockwork, as well as the Abaddon. Godlike streak for the Anti-Mage. Now he's making his way to the bottom lane to truly try to finish this game now. At this point, Ember Spirit. He does finish the MKB. We'll see if they can make a play with this. Reclaim on the Aegis just happened right there, so if they can catch this Anti-Mage, he'll pop the Manta, though, and he's still holding his ground just fine. Takes up the tower, and he'll blink away. Again, the heart can allow him to reset here, and they may not even fall back. They may just keep this going. Again, there's still the two deaths here. Clearly no buybacks. Going back in. The Scythe immediately onto Anti-Mage. 
But Amber Spirit runs right into the smoke cloud. He's at half-life. He's at no life. He's dead. He's staying dead. GG well played. That should do it for Cyber Onzi here. And thus going to a game number three. The anti-mage, he just simply got way too out of control. I, what other explanation do you need? I mean, EPG, they try to play around the idea of having the old school Battle Fury build on Ember Spirit and be able to kind of win off of that idea of the split push constantly, but they did a hell of a job holding off for a while there, but eventually it just became way too much. They could not deal with the anti-mage at all. And again, you also look back at the draft as a whole, it, it just, it really felt off. The Abaddon, frankly, felt not that useful in that game, uh, especially in the one position of the role that he was playing there. So overall, though, valiant effort by Cyber Odyssey, and they forced that third and final game. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take another short break right here, but we have our third and final game now going to be coming up of the day here. Will it be EPG or will it be Cyber Onzi? Well, both these teams definitely proven they can win. Which ones will win? Game number three. Oh, we're going to find out next, guys. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.